If you've been looking into premium Core XY 3D printers over this past year, you're likely to have stumbled across RatRig. RatRig is a company based out of Portugal that has gained quite a bit of popularity with their V-Core Core XY printer that I first saw last year on Teaching Tech's channel. Then late last year, RatRig released the V-Minion, a much smaller footprint cantilever style 3D printer. This little printer was meant to be a beast and it is by far the beefiest small form printer that I have ever seen. Mechanically, it's made up of massive 3060 extrusions and a combination of MGM-15 and MGN-12 rails. We assembled the V-Minion over the course of four streams over on the Modbot Army channel, and I've had a couple of months now to put it through its paces. So in today's video, we will dive into the specs of the V-Minion, what the build process was like, how it's printed, and my overall thoughts on the V-Minion as a whole. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Huge thank you to Fabrico for sponsoring the V-Minion kit for this build. Fabrico is an official distributor of RatRig based here in the US, so shipping times are quick. They carry a wide variety of printer kits, mods, and materials, and are always adding new items to their catalog. If you're interested in picking up the V-Minion, I highly recommend checking them out, and I will have links in the description over to their site. The V-Minion is available as a complete kit, which is what I built, or as a mechanical kit. If you already have things like hot ends, extruders, and controllers laying around, or want a specific config, this can be a great route to go. Diving into the specs, the RatRig V-Minion is a cantilever style 3D printer with a build volume of 180 by 180 by 180 millimeters. As mentioned, the frame is made up of massive 3060 extrusions with the exception of the X-axis, which uses a smaller 2020 extrusion. MGN-12 and MGN-15 linear rails are used for motion and the Z-axis slides up and down on a single motor and lead screw. The bed is made of five millimeter cast aluminum, which is much beefier than what I'm used to seeing on a bed slinger and comes with a magnetic flex plate system and powder coated PEI build surface. The bed uses a custom 24 volt Kinovo silicone heater with three holes in it to allow for bolting the bed down. The V-Minion comes with the EVA toolhead with my kit coming with the 2.4 version. This is a pretty awesome toolhead with excellent cooling and tons of modularity as far as components go. The creator of the toolhead actually hopped into my live stream once or twice to hang out and answer questions, which was really cool to see. He's definitely very active in the 3D printing community. The kit comes with a Bontech LGX Lite extruder, Dragonfly hot end, and an inductive probe for auto bed leveling. There's one axial fan for cooling the heatsink and a larger 5015 blower attached to the back of the tool head for layer cooling. The full kit comes with all of the 3D printed parts that you will need in Rat Rig Green PETG. This is a very bright PETG that I personally think looks awesome against the black extrusions. It is a 24 volt system running Rat OS, which is a modified clipper and mainsail install with some added features. The main board is an SKR2 and it comes with a Pi 3. The power supply is a 350 watt Weha power supply, which is not one I'm familiar with. It would have been nice if it came with a Meanwell power supply, but I haven't had had any issues with the included one. The power supply and both boards are housed separately from the machine inside of their own enclosure. The entire build for the V-Minion with the exception of some of the cable routing was done on live stream over the course of four streams over on the Modbot Army channel. I will have those linked down below in the description if you're interested in checking them out. And if you're not subscribed over there, we have just hit our one year anniversary of streaming every single Wednesday there. It's a ton of fun and you get a little bit of insight and behind the scenes. So if you're not, be sure to hop over there and subscribe. I went into this build fairly blind and after primarily building Vorons over the past year, I was super curious to see what the build process for this was like. Luckily the build guide was incredibly detailed with step-by-step -step instructions that were broken down into sort of bite-sized segments. On top of that, each section has a video that's sort of a exploding view of the specific part that you're building. And so if there ever was a question that I had, typically referencing that video would clear up those questions for me. Compared to building the V0.1, using massive extrusions and M6 bolts was much nicer for my hands and a real treat to work with. The V-Minion does not use any brass heat inserts and instead uses a series of nut traps, which were a little bit annoying to work with. It's quite similar to the Prusa MK3S build, so it's not a big deal, but getting some of those nuts into the printed pockets did take a little bit of 
convincing uh, at some points in the build. Overall, I would say everything though went quite smooth with the build up until the point we got to the wiring. For the wiring part of the build, you're just given an exploded view of what everything plugs into, which yes, is helpful, but there are zero comments about how you should route anything. This took quite a bit of trial and error to figure out the most effective way to route everything cleanly from the tool head and the bed into the electronics box. Some sort of pointers or at least tips in the documentation would really go a long ways. Before I actually got to the wiring, my buddy 760, who has had a V-Minion for many, many months now, uh, let me know to triple check the end stop wiring. He said that on his, he had plugged it into the board and it completely fried his included board. And looking at the picture that they have of all the electronics, there is a warning saying to check the end stop wiring. However, it's not exactly massive in my opinion with all the other things going on on the screen. And sure enough, when I checked my end stop wiring, it was inverted and had he not warned me, I can almost guarantee I would have just plugged it in as is and probably shorted my board as well. Given that the result of plugging in the end stops the way that they come shipped is a damaged controller, this is something I strongly feel that rat rigs should be correcting at factory. Either swap the pins so that they that way they match with the SKR2 or remove the plug altogether. Just give the user the wires pre-crimped and let them plug it into the little uh, is it JST connection. It is a risky thing and because of so many of the other parts coming pre-crimped and pre-wired correctly, to just have it where the end stop is this sort of loose cannon if you will, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So if it happened to my buddy, I'm sure it's happened to other people out there as well. I, again, am sure that he, had he not warned me, I would have just plugged it in as it came into the board. Once the V-Minion was assembled, it was time to install Rat OS, which is a clipper with mainsail configuration that's modified to have some pretty awesome additional features to it. When you flash the SD card and plug it into the Pi and power on your printer, it will actually create a hotspot. You'll then connect to the hotspot from your computer where it will allow you to do some basic configurations and set the printer to connect to your local Wi-Fi network, which is pretty cool. They've sort of expedited the whole setup process where the end user doesn't have to do anything in terminal. On top of that, there are built-in macros. So when you first boot into Rat OS, it'll basically ask you, do you have the V Minion? Do you have the V Core or the other printer that they have a third printer that I don't know what the name is. Um, and so you choose the one you have. I chose the V Minion and then it will ask you what board you have. And so it basically will generate all the files you need and all the different configurations for the boards that they've sort of approved to work with the V Minion, which again, just really expedites things. You don't have to mess around with the config at all. You don't have to go into terminal. You just follow the on-screen prompts and the end result is that the printer is ready to rock and roll. After getting the firmware set up, I hopped over to Super Slicer where there are built-in profiles, which are primarily what I've used for the past two months. At 120 millimeters per second perimeter and 140 millimeters per second infill, these profiles are fairly conservative for what this printer is capable of reaching. However, I generally prefer to print a bit slower and just get very consistent prints and not have to do a whole bunch of tuning and maintenance on the 3D printer. And the V Minion has been incredibly reliable since it was built and first configured. There was a couple of prints where I did bump up the speed a bit just for fun, but honestly, the built-in profiles have worked so well that I just haven't had it in me to really want to deviate too much from them. I printed out all the parts for these head Amame 3D printed headphones, as well as these Min Amame 3D printed headphones out of PTG. With the exception of this band, it was too large, so I used the switch wire, but all the other parts out of PTG were printed on the V Minion. This was a fair amount of printing, and I also printed out a bunch of spares for myself and a bunch of spares uh, for the Min Amames that are going to my dad in case anything breaks on them. That way, there's a spare printed part for just about everything on them. If you're not familiar with the Min or the head Amame 3D printed head, Headphones by Vector Finesse. They are super cool. These actually have replaced my Kingston HyperX headphones. We built these live on stream as well, and I will have them linked down below in the description so you can find out more about these. I've also printed out a handful of PLA models on this printer. I did a couple of the articulating dragons that I ended up giving to my neighbors, a few more prints over here, and then I'm currently in the process of printing out 20 of these magnetic numbers for the one year Mobbot Army stream. I have a kind of cool idea for some giveaways that we're doing and it's just been consistent. I 
slice something up, throw it out here. And most of these numbers, when I print two of them, almost take up the entirety of the bed. I mean, depending on the numbers, there's a few millimeters left on each side, but it's had absolutely no problems with adhesion or extrusion or really anything. I've had quite a bit of experience using the Dragonfly BMO hot end that's in my switch wire and in one of my V0.1s, but I have never used the LGX Lite and I had heard a lot of great things about it. And I gotta say that I really love this little extruder. The V-Minion is unlike any other cantilever style 3D printer I've ever used. I feel confident in saying it's unlike any other cantilever style 3D printer that's out there. Uh, the combination of the 3060 extrusions and these just beefy linear rails make it such a rigid machine. And I've got a couple other cantilever printers. I've got the KP3S, I've got a couple Prusa Minis, and I'm used to being able to go to the end and pressing down on them and having you can see very easily that the arm is bowing or is moving a bit. It's just not happening on the V Minion. It is a very, very, very stiff machine. From a mechanical standpoint, the V Minion is rock solid and you can tell that a ton of thought has gone into it. The biggest part of it that needs some improvement is the routing of the electronics, which just feels like a bit of an afterthought. With a stock build, if you want to upgrade something or swap out a part, all the wires are routed through one or two uh, of these cable braids and go into this electronics box, which means that to undo anything, you have to open the electronics box, completely take the sleeve off, get the cable, get the part out, and then put the new one in, which just isn't convenient. V3D created a PCB breakout board that attaches to the frame and has all the electronics route to that board. Then the wires use an umbilical cord or separate harness to go into the electronics box. This is a much better solution and one that I actually got in that I plan on adding to this. So that way the harness between the board and the PCB, you shouldn't really have to do anything with that. And if you need to adjust anything, you just unplug it from that little breakout board. And it's just a small little area of wire that you need to worry about. Having the power supply, the Raspberry Pi and the controller in a separate electronics box makes this a great candidate for a 3D printer to enclose to print things like ABS or polycarbonate. However, because the full kit comes with PETG components, this really isn't something I'd recommend out of fear that over time, some of the components at least would start to sag or deform. If you go with the mechanical kit, you will be printing out your own parts. You can go with something like ABS or ASA. And really, even if you go with the full kit to just sort of make it easier when it comes to sourcing things for it, there's nothing stopping you from still printing out ABS or ASA parts and using those instead of the included PETG. I already have a few 3D printers that are fully enclosed, so it's not a big deal for me. And the V-Minion will be great for printing PLAs, PETGs, TPUs, and even nylons. I did get a spool of Rat Rig ASA in that I'm going to be using to upgrade to the latest EVA 3.0 toolhead. And I have debated whether it's worth reprinting the parts in ASA, but at this point I'm still not sold. And I'm thinking I'm going to just keep it as is until maybe there's a reason to go ahead and upgrade to something like ASA. Overall, the build process was quite enjoyable. Rat OS has been an absolute treat to work with and the V Minion as a whole has been completely hands off since I first built it a couple months ago. I slice up a file, I send it over to it, it does its thing and I take a finished part off and the parts quality have all been pretty impressive. If you're looking for a very unique smaller format 3D printer for daily printing or if you're looking at something that you can just push to its absolute limits and throw all sorts of things at and just see how quick it can crank out parts, the V Minion is not going to disappoint. And that has been the Rat Rig V Minion. I hope that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. And if you have any additional questions at all, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. Also links will be down below in the description over to the product page if you wanna find out more or pick up either the full V Minion kit or the mechanical kit for yourself. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week. So there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Diana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.